I make stuff. <laughs> I carve. And the best woods are fruit and nut woods. And the best is cherry. What I do is what they call direct carving, which means I'm going to go from, I'm faceting, going from point to point to point on the outside. If you're dealing with wood, it's going to be a log of some sort, which means the ends have no meaning to them in relation to what it is. When I look at the log, I say, well, that might work as this kind of idea. I usually try to find what its balance points are. It's going to be mostly on the, quote, ends which I would like not to have exist. This three-dimensional thing sitting in space. So you have, you, I just wiggle it out over the edge of things until I find what it actually has to stand on. The medium that I'm using tends to lend itself to objects, but the idea doesn't necessarily. You know, you can do it any old way you want to deal with it, whatever seems to work for you. To me, when it's all done and tidied up and whatever, which you know, I'm less and less inclined to do, then it's at its most boring. So people will come in and say, I can't wait to see this all finished. And I'm like, really? <laughs> to myself? <laughs> I just think it's kind of funny that, you know, so that people want to see this finished thingy dingy because they still think of them as beautiful objects I guess. We just try to put things in little boxes. So is it a this or is it a that we want to know? I don't know. So I kind of like that. That's what I like about this, the open-endedness of what you're doing. Same thing as martial arts. Same kind of idea like all the Qigong stuff and all the different kinds of martial arts are for different purposes. I would be working here during the day and then I would go to a class over there at night and he'd be saying the exact same things I was, but he would be talking about yourself. And I was talking, when I was talking to students or talking to myself, it was about this, this form that I was making and its balance and it's this and it's that. It's like doing different kinds of styles of sculpture for different purposes. <laughs> and so they kind of wove themselves together. It was, it, it's been very interesting, nice that way. I started out in Westchester and then they moved to the island and I, I was fine. <laughs> and then they decided to go to the country which was Dutchess County, which was not that far out of New York. I mean, they thought, upstate, <laughs> you know, and I had no kind, but I felt as if I was in Idaho. <laughs> but it ended up being very good for me. So I had this very interesting bunch of people around, not to mention my mom's mom, who had wanted to be a doctor, and of course they wouldn't let any women into schools for doctors. So she just learned it anyway. If you got sick in the middle of the night, you wanted her to come. I can remember going through the woods with my mother, who knew a lot about a lot of stuff, but of course she was much more scholarly. She would say, look at that plant. <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> you know, and I'd be down there on my hands and knees going, oh, well, this is how it goes together. So this is like six years old five years old. My dad and I would go into the museum. We ended up at the Met a lot because they had everything from soup to nuts. And I knew all the guards because I, the way I see things, I touch them. And you're not supposed to touch anything in that joint. The reason I ended up making sculpture really is probably two things. One is I used to do things with my grandfather all the time who invented machinery. So that's making stuff. That's why the carving makes sense to me. Otherwise, it would just be this kind of academic kind of thing, you know. So I was trying to choose between Cooper Union and someplace else. He said, well, there's a nice little school in Providence. My parents wanted me to do something practical, so I lasted in graphic design for a month or so, a semester. 
it was easier just not to be such a success and pick my shots than it was to try to make, because people were always doing it. I mean, very competitive if you want to get to the top of whatever the current art trend is. And, you know, so at a certain point, that's why I ended up doing the oldest thing I could find <laughs> and the least um, encumbered. Of course, it, it does have its encumbrances. Everything does. Everything, every choice you make has, has ramifications for things. So, but that's okay as long as you, one accepts them, you know, so. I tend not to fault people for having a different idea than myself of what they should be doing. Well, it got too much about what the surface is like and what the image is like and what, what, whatever it is is like, you know, the aftermath. It doesn't matter how many forms you know or how much stuff you know. You don't know anything. <laughs> You're just blithering. And I feel like that a lot about a lot of what people say in the arts. I think we've worked ourselves into a corner. This is just my own personal view in our culture where everything is so discreet and so separate that so different artists get together and they say, oh, what do you do? And usually either talking about some kind of concept thing or some kind of material thing, which to me is totally irrational. We're just totally irrational at this point. I think for the artist, the person that's doing the thing, so um, the process becomes more and more important. A screwdriver, it should feel good in your hand. It should look beautiful when you look at it because the beauty of the tool comes from the fact that it's working with something. It's a conversation and someone, that's why I like the, the kid that came in and said that the piece looked like a taco. <laughs> I said, well, think about that. That's a good place to start because what do you have? It's different, like you can get as, you know, it can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. I'm probably more on the philosophical end I think that it's really about the way we look at life, an artistic view or a non-artistic view. I'm just doing what I feel like now. The main thing for me is making the stuff, doing the art, doing the thing. To me, it's continuous problem solving. I want to continue to work and continue to look at things and continue to absorb things and you know that to me is you know that's what it's about that's my basic quality i'm never satisfied that's what gets me up in the morning